I'm a believer that this team's gonna win the national championship. Something stupid is coming out of his mouth. I don't know. Maybe it's just my age. He needs his vote pulled immediately. And of course, yes, a season like this has to have a name. Let's talk about something good about Justin Freck. What are you doing? The season of dreams. Ohio State, my guys, are either the best or the second best program in the history of college football. This guy is a bonehead. They love him. I question your judgment as an adult. I really do. I was a total hater. I know that for a fact. And I just don't get it. Get us back our sleeves and say, bring me that. That's the one I want. Hey, welcome to Junk on Bucks on a Sunday night. I know, man. Weird, right? It is Sunday night. It is 9.30 p.m. And I'm sitting here getting my notes together for tomorrow's show. Tomorrow's show, by the way, 9.30 a.m. That'll be a Junk and Chris live uh, edition. Myself and Chris Drew from Menace to Sports at 9.30. We're going to compare our uh, rankings that we both put together heading into week 12. And then we're going to go over our picks from the weekend, as well as talk uh, some Buckeye football, the game against Purdue, the upcoming game against Northwestern, and probably the topic we're about to hit on now. Oh, but I do want to tell you, 8 p.m. Monday night, tomorrow night, I'm going to be on uh, my buddy JR. JR from the Voice of College Football, Ohio State, Big Ten Huddle, JR's rankings. I'm going to be on with him on the Big Ten Huddle at 8 p.m. That's going to be a call-in show. So look out for that and come uh, come catch me and JR tomorrow on the Buckeye Huddle, 8 p.m. Uh, call in if you want to. We can talk about whatever you want. Maybe some of you want to talk about this topic. But let's get to what we want to talk about. The class of 2022, the linebacker class. At the top, some crazy talent. The number one linebacker in the country was Harold Perkins. Harold Perkins, absolutely insane athlete, crazy linebacker down at LSU. Um, from North Carolina, went to LSU. And no, he's not from North Carolina. He's from Texas. He's from Texas and went to LSU. And he uh, was absolutely fantastic. Got hurt this year. They were playing him kind of out of position. There was a kerfuffle about that. The kid's just dynamite, right? And then the third rated linebacker, Jalen Walker. He's from North Carolina. Jalen Walker, another total freak show down at Georgia. Impact player, a total weapon. When you want someone to rush the passer, you want someone like Jalen Walker. The number two rated linebacker in that class was our guy, C.J. Hicks. Archbishop Alter, Dayton, Ohio, 6'3", 215, the number 10 overall player in the country. And that was an exciting day when he committed to Ohio State, and he was a great commit. He, uh, He helped recruit the class. He was kind of the face of the class. And it was particularly exciting when... We got news that his running mate was going to reclassify and also be in that class, Sonny Styles. So you had those two guys and uh, two Ohio dudes, five stars, and it was really exciting. Sonny was listed as a, a safety. A lot of people always thought that he would eventually make his way down a little further. And hell, who knows? He might end up making his way down a little further uh, by the time his career ends. But really exciting nonetheless. What could these two be? What could CJ Hicks be? Got the size. Got the athleticism. The high school tape is is crazy. Um, not the highest competition, but you can definitely see it jumps off the page. What a great athlete he is. And in 2023, last year, there was a lot of irritated Buckeye fans that you had a couple of linebackers who weren't great athletes in Steel Chambers and Tommy Eichenberg, each getting 600 snaps. Cody Simon got 300 snaps. Heck, you played... Tommy Eichenberg with a broken arm, right? And never really a whiff of CJ Hicks other than some garbage time. Admittedly, he looked pretty lousy in that garbage time. Looked like he was kind of clueless, didn't know what he was doing. Not trying to pick on him, obviously. He he was young. He, but this spring we went into, Tommy Eichenberg and Steel Chambers are gone. And Cody Simon was the presumed starting Mike. And CJ Hicks number one candidate to get that will position starting job on lock until it was made official that Sonny Styles was moving down from safety. And then it was going to be CJ and Sonny competing for that spot, which to a lot of people was not good news. You wanted to see those guys on the field together. That was the vision we had when they first came in. It didn't look like that was going to happen to me. I didn't really care because I'm a big Cody Simon fan. A lot of people at that point did not really think Cody Simon had much value. Were kind of irritated that he was, it felt like, kind of given that position and didn't have to fight for it. 
it's become clear since then, I think, to everybody why that is. Cody Simon is, uh, is you know, the most polished, best linebacker, best leader on that team. And uh, the battle between Sonny and CJ for that will position was one that I just figured, look, whoever wins, the other one's going to play a lot too because they're neck and neck and they both bring something different. Now, we had heard that there was uh, that CJ was getting it. Things were coming around. We heard that in the spring. He was picking it up. And we saw, even ourselves, that blitzing, it looked amazing. When they had the student appreciation practice, which was open to the public, he damn near lifted Donovan Jackson off his feet. And it was just like, wow, this could really be something with CJ blitzing. So we enter into the season. First game, CJ plays 33 snaps. The second game, he plays 16 snaps. The third game, he plays 15 snaps. And in those three games, it was very apparent that he was the worst linebacker to play, the worst of them all. Uh, he was slow to react when he made tackles, tried to make a tackle. It, it, it just didn't look good and he was missing tackles when he was working sideline to sideline he looked slow but he's not a slow man he was just a step slow so it always looked slow and it just looked like man everything we heard about him getting it and things coming together it just it just wasn't true he's he wasn't there yet at that time through three games in fact through the through three games he, he never finished uh above fifth from the bottom on the team in PFF rankings, which I don't put a ton of stock into PFF rankings, but when you see someone playing really bad, then you also see that they're, you know, grading out really bad consistently. You know, it's just a, a little reaffirming, but it was bad, man. It was straight up bad. And ever since then, he's pretty much been relegated to the bench. Arvell Reese at the same time ascending, it, clearly as a natural linebacker, someone who just naturally can grasp and get the things that CJ isn't. So many folks started talking about, why don't we just bring CJ down? Bring him down to the edge. If they're saying he's great at blitzing, and we did get to see a couple of those blitzes in games where he looked pretty good, they're not going to play the jack. Jim Knowles told us they're not going to play that jack. The jack take one defensive lineman off the field and have that hybrid linebacker defensive lineman and uh, a guy that's really good at rushing the, rushing the passer but can also handle linebacker responsibilities. That's the Jack. C.J. Hicks, kind of a perfect type of guy for that, but they're not going to play it. So if they're not going to play it, just move this guy down to the edge because it seems clear to all of us at this point, probably not going to ever be a linebacker who's good enough to start at Ohio State doesn't mean you're not a good linebacker. There's only two starting linebackers at Ohio State, and it's tough to get one of those roles. Not a knock on him. Not everybody's going to get there. Doesn't make you a bad player. Just means, you know, you're not quite good enough at Ohio State. My personal opinion is if he's never going to be contributing as a linebacker, go ahead, move him down. Ryan Day was asked about this, and he said, we need him to stay where he is, basically. He talked about depth issues, potentially, at linebacker. You lose one or two guys, and then where are you? And that irritated a lot of people when he said that because they know, look, this dude's just not going to get it, and every time he's in there at linebacker, he's hurting the team, missing tackles. But we saw him get steamrolled by who was it? Was it the, the Marshall quarterback? One of these quarterbacks just steamrolled. I mean, it's just been bad, really bad. So what is C.J.? think about it last week it was announced that the most promising young edge rusher true freshman edrick houston five star from buford georgia a five star who came in and just got a start in his first game was moving from the edge to the inside and he moves inside has a really good game but moving him inside while it makes sense because it fits his body and fits his skill set leaves ohio state really low in numbers on the outside behind so you got jack and jt who are going to be gone this year after this year 
Next year, that puts Caden Curry and Kenyatta Jackson as the two starters, presumably. Behind them, you got Josh Mickens and you've got Dom Kirks. And that's it, other than the three freshmen you have coming in. Zaheer Mathis definitely won't be ready. He needs to put on a lot of weight. Ziggy Grady, potentially. London Merritt, potentially. But none of them are that Edric Houston type of guy where you say, okay, if forced into it, this guy can get you good minutes. None of them are. On the interior, you've got Caden McDonald, Hero Canoe, Jason Moore, Edric Houston, uh, Will Smith, Eric Mensa. Um, I'm probably missing somebody. Incoming freshman, Jarquez Carter, Maxwell Roy, Trajan Odom. Like 10 guys. 10 guys on the inside. You only need like eight. The freshmen that are coming in, not going to be ready. You got four there. So if you're thinking maybe CJ Hicks might be the guy, it would probably make sense to do it now and get him rolling in there with them, I would imagine. But CJ Hicks, unprompted, told us what he felt about it. Let's listen in. Jeremiah. A specific request. What do you need? That's a lot of pizza. Hey, nobody else in there. <laughs> hey, what does it feel like to get on a blitz? This this stuff that they're doing defensively. Need to put me on the fucking edge. This the stuff that they're doing defensively. Need to put me on the fucking edge. They need to put me on the effing edge, is what he said. They need to put me on the effing edge. So now we know where CJ Hicks stands on the on the side of the argument. He wants to move down to the edge. He wants to move out on the edge. He's not a good linebacker. He's not getting any playing time at linebacker. He thinks he can probably get it at edge. Now, obviously, you don't just do things because a player wants to do that. That's not the way this works. But it sure seems to make a lot of sense. My personal opinion, he's not going to be an impact player at edge either. When I watch him in film, I see some things out of him that I just don't see from anybody else on that field. And I'll just, I mean, it's little things, even the way, even the way he puts his hands on people, it's just a lack of aggression that I don't see from anybody else. And you can want it as much as, as much as you can for somebody to have that in him. I just don't think he does. You've seen a flash here or there, and that's it. And even this weekend, he had a free shot at Hudson card. I mean, a free running shot. Now this, this had nothing to do with aggressiveness or, or lack of, but this just blew my mind. I can't play things because it'll get a copyright, but here's him running with a straight shot at this quarterback. And this is a split second later as the quarterback jukes him out of his shoes and he's on the ground. And that's just unacceptable, man. That's not Jalen Milrow. But that is not Jalen Milrow right there that just puts you on the ground, juking you out of your shoes. I just don't think he's ever going to result into being any kind of big-time player. However, uh, you don't need him in the linebacker room. You might need him, and who knows? Maybe, maybe he does develop into something down there at edge. And certainly now we know how he feels about it. So anyway, how do you feel about it? Let me know in the comments below and I'll check you later. Chuck on Bucks out. Hey, it's Chuck. Chuck. Who the f is Chuck? Chuck on Bucks. Chuck on Bucks. Chuck on Bucks. Chuck. 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 Chuck on Bucks. My guy, Chuck. Chuck on Bucks. My buddy, Chuck. Chuck is Chuck. Chuck. It's Chuck on Bucks. Okay. Chuck. Chuck is junk. The Chuck eyes. Chuck eyes. Chuck on Bucks. Junk. Junk.